and left a lot of people asking, how did they do that? Al Roker has some answers in a Dateline State of the Art. In the first Matrix movie, this gunfight with bullets flying by Keanu Reeves became the film's most famous scene, even winning the flick an Oscar. Now this fight scene in the sequel, Matrix Reloaded, is stealing the show. I uh, was constantly reminded that there was a lot of pressure being put upon me, ratcheting up the film. Stop! Special effects director John Gatiss says the goal this time was to top the bullet time scene from the first Matrix. Action. Well, they did it with this fight sequence in which hero Neo battles 100 identical evil Agent Smiths played by Hugo Weaving. But the trick is the combination of real actors and computer-generated clones performing together without you even knowing it. It was an exponential uh, leap forward in trying to effectively... Uh, virtualize, dimensionalize, create a computer graphic version of everything that might be seen in a, in a real set, in a real acting performance. Mm -hmm. That has never really been done. So just how did Gator do it? The camera moves, the action. One of his digital wizards, George Borshikov, helps explain. Which do you think is the most difficult thing to make it look real? I would guess the head, the face. Exactly. Face. This has been the biggest challenge of computer graphics in the last 20 years, uh, is to produce a realistic looking com uh, face of a human. Mm -hmm. First, Gaeta's team made a plaster cast of Hugo Weaving's face and head to capture all of his wrinkles and pores. Then, they photographed Weaving's face from every possible angle to capture his skin tones. Neutral? Okay, now a really big one. You're running around. Finally, the most difficult challenge, how do you duplicate Weaving's unique facial expressions? For that, Gata's team invented a technique called universal capture, using five high-definition video cameras that surrounded Weaving's face. Gata's team recorded every move he made while he acted out his fight scenes. Then all of it was streamed into a supercomputer and married together. The final result? A computer-generated clone of Weaving's face and head that looks so realistic it's hard to tell the fake from the real. By the way, the fake one is on the left. But what good's a head without a body? Action. For that, the special effects team used a technique called motion capture. Motion capture really is where we are attempting to get the, all the motions of the body. To do that, the actors perform their scenes in bodysuits covered with reflective ping pong balls. Then 20 to 30 cameras recorded the points of light reflected from the balls as the actors played out their scenes. From the multiple cameras, you're calculating where in space any one of those points are over time. With that, Gata's team could now simulate real human movement for the computer-generated actors. Finally, Gata's team combined all these elements, along with some new lighting tricks, to create Hollywood's first computer-generated humans, who not only look real, but move and act just like us. It's a pretty intense ride. When you're trying to uh, reinvent the way you make images. And reinvent images is exactly what Gaeta and his team have done. And they've done it so well, it's almost as if they've created the seeds for a real-life matrix. Oh, that sounds sinister. That's right, and it Ooh. is a dark plot to replace Ooh. everybody at a certain point. <laughs> Eventually, we will get around and we will digitize you. <laughs> it is inevitable. It took the makers of The Matrix Reloaded three and a half years to create the more than 1,000 special effects in the film. They finished just a few weeks before last Thursday's opening. That's all for this edition of Dateline Tuesday. We'll see you again for Dateline Friday at a special time, 8, 7 central. Now stay tuned for your local news. I'm Stone Phillips, and for all of us at NBC News, good night. Later on The Tonight Show, 